Tremor is a town in County Down in Northern Ireland of about 6,000 people. It's roughly 20 minutes outside Belfast and it's where I grew up and went to school. I was born in 1998, the year the Good Friday Agreement was signed here in Northern Ireland. It means I grew up after the Troubles ended and didn't have to worry as much as maybe my parents did, for example, about getting caught up in the conflict that was happening here. Me and others like me who were born after it was signed are known as peace babies. And I'm keen to find out where they think Northern Ireland could be in the next 25 years. Just across the way is my old school, Tremor High. I left here in 2017, but I'm heading back to meet with some of the pupils who are today sitting in the classrooms I used to be in. The five of us sitting here right now, we're all peace babies, all born in Northern Ireland after the Good Friday Agreement was signed. <laughs> Big cheer for the peace babies. <laughs> Is that something you think about a lot? Like, what does that mean to you? I feel like for our generation, it doesn't mean much because we're very ignorant to the pain and the suffering that our parents or grandparents went through. As a generation, we will never understand that. When I say the term, the troubles, what do you think of straight away, David? Derry Girls. Derry Girls? Yeah. <laughs> you a big fan? Big fan. Even just like the army getting aboard the bus and them acting like it's just a normal thing. Mm. Like we never worry about violence. You know, we don't get on a school bus and fear for our lives like people did. I think we're very separate from it and it feels like ages ago for us. Is that something that you think still exists, that you would feel afraid to say whether you're a Catholic or a Protestant in certain areas, Karis? Yeah, I've heard of like friends of mine have been certain places and they've said that they are maybe Catholic when they're Protestant or Protestant when they're Catholic because they were like they felt that they would be under threat if they said um, that they were a Protestant or a Catholic just because the people and the environment they were in. I think that it's all about appreciating someone else that's different from you and knowing that their ideas and their ideals may be different than you, but that doesn't mean you can't be friends with them, that doesn't mean you can't work beside them, that doesn't mean you can't train beside them, because the reality of Northern Ireland is everywhere you go, you're going to be with someone who's a different religion than you, who has different ideas from you, and that's what you have to accept and move on from. So, moments after the Good Friday Agreement was signed in 1998, Kerry was born. She's now 25 too, but she's grown up in the shadow of it her whole life, and she has a bit of a personal connection to it as well. She's from Lisburn originally, which is about 10 minutes outside of Dromore, where we were, uh, but she now lives in Dublin, so we're on our way down to go and meet her. Kerry, what are we going through here? Yeah, so these are all from 1998, um, around, say, April 10th to probably April 12th, where my parents did some interviews for the newspapers. So this one is the Sunday World, and the headline is My Hope, and it's a picture of you. Yeah. And the first sentence of the article is, this is our hope for the future, literally. Yeah, so my middle name is Hope, Kerry Hope, Sarah Patterson. Um, my parents named me this, I guess, as for them it meant hope for the future generations of Northern Ireland. And that hope that they had, do you think what they were hoping for has happened? I think for the most part it has. Um, you know, the violence has ended for the most part and the communities are a lot more integrated than they were. You know, I, I think they, they would still like to see more progress in, in terms of the government and getting Stormont back up and running, but they're really proud of, of how I've been able to have such a happy and, and healthy childhood and, and that that's been echoed throughout Northern Ireland for my generation. Kerry seems pretty optimistic about the future there. It seems that hope that her parents had 25 years ago is still something that she has today. And just 10 minutes drive from here actually is the relatives of one of those people responsible for giving them that hope. We in the STLP concluded many years ago that we couldn't lay the basis for agreement against a background of violence or disorder. Ollie, explain to me who your granddad is. Uh, well, my granddad's John Hume, uh, he was a politician in Northern Ireland. Uh, he worked during the Troubles and uh, in the, like, worked for the, during the peace process um, and on the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, and he sort of helped bring the two sides together. And he'd be like, he'd come in, he'd be in his armchair and he'd fall in straight asleep watching the TV and if you go to change the channel, he'd be like, 
I was watching that. And I don't think I really realised, because I was quite young, I don't think I really realised how important he really was to the country until he died and he was, he was on the news for like five days straight. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I had no idea because he was really just granddad. How do you feel about what your granddad did 25 years ago? I honestly think it's pretty cool because like, I'd be in school and I'd be like, like just like in history or whatever and, and he would be like, We'd be looking through the textbooks and there'd just be like photographs of him and like talking about him and it's like, wow, he like, he really did something important. What's the legacy like for you, Holly? Um, like, I, some of my friends were over here the other day and they saw like the photo with uh, Bill Clinton and the, the Nobel Prize and they think it's like crazy and they're like, I remember some of them were sending photos of it uh, to their parents. And they were saying, oh, like, is this not weird to you having this in your house? And I just, like, it's, to me, it's just my granddad. 100 miles back up the road is Belfast, the capital city of Northern Ireland. These days, tourists arrive from all over to hear about the troubles and the peace process here. But in some areas of the city, like here in West Belfast, where walls that separate the two sides of the community tower over houses, and in some cases run through people's back gardens, Peace isn't something that's a certainty. Just two years ago, riots broke out by the peace line at Lenork Way. Police officers were attacked, petrol bombs thrown, and a bus was set on fire. The police said paramilitary organizations were likely to have been involved. It's a different picture to where we are now, the Lyric Theatre across the city, where I've come to meet some young actors rehearsing for their next big production. Aaron, you're telling me from, you know, like the Shankill area, Bally Sill, and that's an area that I suppose is quite famous. Um, people, you know, would have heard of it and, you know, be kind of known for being like a unionist, loyalist area. Well, tell me a bit about what's like growing up there. Growing up, I was always quite insulated from <clears throat> like the sort of conflict, I guess. Like my parents kind of kept it out. Like I didn't really even know Catholics were a thing until I was about 10. Um, and I remember my dad trying to explain it to me and just not having a clue what he was talking about. Um, but growing up there's probably, I mean, it's pretty much just the same as growing up everywhere else. I mean, those areas are quite underfunded or deprived in some areas. I think they've been left behind a bit in some of the regeneration that's gone on post Good Friday Agreement. Would you describe peace as fragile in, you know, maybe the area that you grew up in? I think I think so. I think especially the last couple of years, um, especially I think post-Brexit, has sort of stirred the pot an awful lot. I don't know if it was a couple of months ago or a year ago, I can't remember, there was all that trouble in Lanark Way and there was a bus stolen and everything else. And I remember being there that night and the, the riot or whatever you want to call it, there was the old boys at the back sending the young lads at the front forward. Do you know what I mean? So I think especially over the last couple of years, I think there's a perception among a lot of people in sort of the areas I'm from that the peace hasn't, necessarily benefited them. We've come to London Derry, or Derry, Northern Ireland's second city, with a population of about 110,000 people. We're on Peace Bridge right now, and peace is something we've talked a lot about, but I'm now keen to hear what other issues are on young people's minds here. Our first stop is the Guildhall to meet Bethany, who works for a women's organisation and also supports those going through abortions. It's really hard for me to approach the 25th anniversary with this celebratory tone. We have to look at, you know, proper healthcare uh, institutions. You know, we also have the worst NHS waiting lists across the UK. We need to look at the mental health crisis here. You know, we've lost more lives to suicide than we did in the Troubles. Um, we need to look at, you know, um, diversity, the change in demographics, you know, ending violence against women and girls, championing relationship and sex education, doing that work on the ground to make sure that everyone here can not only survive but thrive and live healthy, fulfilled lives. I mean, surely that's what peace is all about. The final person I'm meeting on my tour of Derry is student Ellie Jo at one of the city's newest tourist hotspots. Northern Ireland's been without an executive now, you know, for over a year. It's not the first time this has happened. What impact does that have on you and your friends and other young people? Um, you know, I'm only 18 years of age. I actually don't really know a function of Stormont. We only had it there for about two, three years before it actually broke down once again. I think 
when I actually look at, you know, as somebody studying law politics, what political leadership have I seen? What actual politics have I seen? And it's all been very disappointing. Like, I actually don't understand. Yesterday, familiar scenes as violence reared its head again in Derry. People taking part in an illegal Republican parade threw petrol bombs at a police van. Tensions are flaring up again on both sides. But for the young people I've been talking to, though, there's still positivity around their future and what the next 25 years could hold.